Hello. I'm here today to talk about the significance of MCDC for DO-178 and other certifications. And to approach that, I am going to start by looking at the Wikipedia page for MCDC. And I do this not because I, I believe in everything on Wikipedia, but because this particular paper uh, references what is really the, the two most important sources of information about MCDC. If you go to the end and you look at the references section, you'll see two things. One is CAS 10, which is the, the classic CAS paper about MCDC. And then the second is the practical tutorial on MCDC, which is a NASA paper, which talks about MCDC best practices and usage. So what is MCDC? Well, MCDC is looking at multiple condition decisions where you have an if statement with one or more conditions uh, and making sure that you have test cases that exercise each parts of the, the, uh, the, the MCDC statement. What's interesting about the Wikipedia to page is it talks a lot about cheating MCDC, which is something you can't really do with a tool like LDRA. So let's take a look at LDRA's presentation of MCDC. To do so, I'm going to go into TB Run. TB Run is a tool that allows you to explore the structure of code, um, particularly code with complex conditions and decisions, and make sure it um, make sure you have test cases, requirements-based test cases to achieve your certification goals. So the first thing I always do when I approach TP Run is I do a test build. What test build means is that TB Run uh, performs any static analysis, creates any stubs, creates any infrastructure required to test and make sure everything uh, builds appropriately. And when I do that, uh, TB Run tells me test program was built successfully. And so I have my, my, first, uh, my, my first build for the executable for my MCDC test code file. If I look at the source file itself, I can see that this source file uh, primarily consists about this um, C++ class with a, with, a in, uh, with a method called set, which takes three inputs, A, B, and C, uh, and performs three uh, and, and, and does an OR and an AND with them to achieve a result. Uh, and this structure mirrors what you'll see in many of the MCDC papers. They all talk about these conditions A, B, and C, and we'll see that in LDRA as well. So to approach this, I'll go back to TB Run, and I'll do, um, to start with, by creating my first test case, I will hit Run Standard Extreme Test. And that creates my first test case, uh, and what I'll see is this first test case achieves some statement coverage, some branch coverage, but zero MCDC coverage. Now, why is that? Now, and to understand that, I will go take a look at my dynamic coverage analysis report. My dynamic coverage analysis report shows that uh, I have, um, it shows my statement branch and, and, and MCDC coverage. And uh, in the, the MCDC truth table, it shows the conditions A, B, and C which are aligned with those variables a, b, and c, and uh, it, it shows the conditions that I've exercised. In this case, I've automatically created a test case where a, b, and c are all false, and any conditions that are paired with those. Paired means that I toggle one element from true to false. So in this case, I can toggle um, element uh, B or element A here, element A, if I toggle from false, here's my element A is false, to true, and here's my element A is true, I toggle the expected outcome from false to true. And the other thing you see is these essential pairs. So the, the essential pairs are the pairs, these are the starred pairs where if you achieve all of the essential pairs and any necessary associated pairs, which are these um, connected pairs, you will achieve 100% MCDC coverage with N plus one test cases. So to understand that, let's follow that process. So we started out um, with this 
So remember, we started out with a um, with a test case where all of our inputs were false. But given the nature of the decision and C and C++ short circuit analysis, the last part here, this condition C, is not included in the results. Because the last part, condition C, uh, never gets executed if the other two are, are, are both false. So that gives us this implicit coverage of this test case five, where, um, where, uh, the, um, uh, where A is false, B is false, and C is true. Now this is, this is implicit coverage, but we can, we can change our inputs in TB run from the auto-generated ones to match that because that's one of our essential conditions. So if I change this, to uh, one, so that's changing my C to one, and it doesn't change the expected outcome here because again, that, that's the uh, effect of short circuit analysis. I can then uh, duplicate this test case and then toggle that pair A from false to true, and I expect the outcome to change from false to true. So now when I run this, I will exercise this pair here. This pair where you have this line in the truth table uh, as well as this line in the truth table where I'm toggling that element A from false to true and my result is going from false to true. So let's run it and see that line turn, turn green. So I'm going to hit run driver, run driver, which builds my executable and runs dynamic coverage analysis. Uh, and then I see now I have some MCDC coverage, 33% MCDC coverage. So this means of the three conditions, one of my conditions has a paired set of MCDC results. So going back into my table and refreshing, I can see that I now have that pair covered. So that, that additional result that I entered in matched up and I now have my pair. And that, that's, that's what I expect. There is also, again, some implicit coverage due to short circuit analysis, but uh, we'll, we'll um, we, you know, we talked about that. It's, it's because in C++, if you have an and statement, the other side doesn't get executed if the first side is false. So that's inherent in the C and C++ implementation of MCDC, um, but we're not going to uh, spend that much time on it right now. So let's look at the next condition. So now we have condition B, and we're gonna toggle condition B from false to true, and we wanna see the outcome go from false to true. So let's go back into TB1, and we might as well name this. So this is essential case for a and B, and then this is a paired case for A. And then I'll copy this and then paste this, and then I'll call this paired case for B, and I'll change my condition B from false to true, and then I expect this to change the result from true to false. So let's again review this. So we're, we're now looking at this B pair. So this is one side of the B pair and the other side is here. And in the B pair, we are expecting the results to change. Uh, we're toggling B from false to true and we're, we're expecting the outcome to change from false to true. Uh, and, and in fact, I copied the wrong one here. So I'm just going to line up my truth table so that uh, we're, we're looking at, at the, the right one. So we're looking at the case. So we already have this case. So we're looking at the case where false, true, true, and an expected outcome of true. So false, true, true, with an expected outcome of true. And uh, this is again paired with the essential case here where when we look at test case one and test case three, the difference is that B changes and the result changes. So let's go ahead and hit run. And now we should see that we achieved 
66% or 67%, you know, so this is two thirds of my MCDC cases are covered. If I go back into my table and I refresh, I can see that I have now achieved that case. And so now I have three conditions and three test cases, but I need one more condition, N plus one, to get to 100% uh, MCDC coverage. So to look at that, I have to look at that condition C, and I have to look at the paired case for C. And I note that the case that I just looked at was also a case for, for C. In fact, I've got a couple different choices here, but let's just stick with the ones that, that we just looked at here. So that's the false, true, true, and that's this test case C, false, true, true, and we'll also call it also essential case for C. And then I'll duplicate that and then paste it. And then I'll do, I'll call it paired case for C. And so then I'll toggle C from zero to one and I'll toggle the result from one to zero. So going back, my prediction is that I am toggling C. Uh, here's the one that I have and here's the one that I'm looking for. So I'm going from true in C to false in C and I'm expecting the result to change and I'm expecting to achieve 100% MCDC coverage. Let's hit run and see what happens. And there we go. We have 100% MCDC coverage. We've achieved that additional pair. Uh, and we, we've shown that we can achieve coverage with N plus one test cases. Now, why is this important? Well, there's you know, really a couple things that come up um, all of which relate back to the standard. Uh, there's MCDC is about uh, making sure that you, you have a way to exercise each subcondition. So this is a way, way to do that. And it's been used for a long time in DL-178, B and C to ensure the adequateness of, of testing of uh, software where, the, where a, a failure can lead to a catastrophic failure of a device. And it's also been borrowed in other fields as well. So it's also been borrowed in ISO 26262 and IEC 61508. Again, when you're in a, a device or an automobile where the risk of failure is equivalent to catastrophic, MCDC is a good way to make sure that you've done enough testing. Uh, and it is easy to achieve and understand by using TB Run to help you create test cases and looking at the MCDC test case planner report in LDRA's dynamic coverage tools. So that's all I had. If you had more questions, please feel free to contact us. Thank you.